all of you bugs upon bugs upon bugs upon bugs upon why aren't you fixing your bugs, Ubisoft? My name is Jules and this is Scott. <laughs> Didn't know what you were doing there. It was like a Men in Black reference, but I'm not in. And believe it or not, we are talking about Ubisoft. Mr. Creed. And Assassin's Creed Origins. Scott has had some hands-on time with mm. this game. And let's just say he's a little bit zesty this morning. <laughs> a little bit. I've got a list of things, complaints, or as Scott would call it, things that he's written for me to lead him into talking about jumping off points. Rolls off the tongue. Let's talk about Assassin's Creed Origins. Let's do it. First impressions. One word. Oh, I've got... Oh, there's one... Rich did this to me the other day. One word. I um, like oh, uh, That's not a word. Would it be just disappointing? Disappointing, okay. Um, well then why? Why is it disappointing? Because I mean, I look forward oh. to paying extra money to unlock a dagger to kill specific enemies. I mean, did you, yeah, did you know that your hidden blade doesn't work if you plunge it into someone's neck anymore? It you seems need to, to level it up. It seems so. to work perfectly fine when I'm stabbing no, into this guy, but no, not this no guy. No anymore, it's just going to bounce off. You need to level that thing up before you put it in a person's neck. But that's beside the point. Oh. So let's, so, it, so disappointing. Yes, because they took a year off and the whole, I mean obviously, you know, the last few years of Assassin's Creed haven't been the best. Um, Unity was like obviously regarded as a hell of a failure, it required yeah. a massive patch to even get it working on an Xbox One. Uh, Syndicate, I thought, brought things back around to at least being nicely playable. I quite liked it. I, did, yeah, it I, didn't, I didn't love it, but I liked it. Same, and like uh, Jacob and Evie were good characters, and um, and then we had the time off, and it was like, okay, they're going to go back, they're going to you know, gonna reinvest all their money into rebooting Assassin's Creed. It's called Origins, so we're actually going to get the origin of the Assassin's Order and I all mean, that jazz. There's a great sense of weight and pressure on this game to well, succeed because yeah. of the fact it's like we're going back to the source it better be a bloody good one and it better be it's, yeah it's like do or die again like at Syndicate was very much do or die and they did um, even though I mean a lot of people are just so done with Assassin's Creed now I mean, yeah. it's, it's a decade old now um, so yeah so you know you go into it and you think okay what have, what have they done and it's just there's such a lack of polish like there's just such a lack of playtesting and bug testing and like just quality control like the initial impression that they get opens on a, on a combat thing like it opens with a one-on-one -on -one fight um, and the fighting is horrible. Like, just the fighting is like this horrible Dark Souls like thing. I'll, I'll get into each bit well, of it. This thing, I looked, at, I looked at some of the clips that you put out, you'd shared, and also some people like um, Jim Sterling and the other stuff yes. that's come out as well. And just, it never fails to amaze me how games get to launch day and still have these crippling visual glitches yeah. and things like that. It's like, I, I get that it is an incredibly hard job to do bug testing mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But when you've got a game that has, in the case that I saw, a man just sort of glitching through a wall, a boat in the air and stuff like that, it's like, that's not okay. The thing with that is... Delay um, it. Delay it a bit longer. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like, Ubisoft's marketing department and, like, their general sort of corporate structure doesn't allow for quality to take over, like, you know, and, and be prioritised. Like, they have dates set in place and they want to hit them. And so, like, something like CD Projekt Red proved that you can do an open world game. I mean, The Witcher wasn't flawless, like, by any means in terms of um, technical-wise, and it, they did do a hell of a lot of patches, but it was in a much better state than what this, what this yeah. is. Yeah. Um, and that's the thing. Like, at some point, Ubisoft, if they want to have, like, you know, they need to prioritize quality control at some yeah. point because this is, for a 60, for a full price game, um, this doesn't feel like it at all. Yeah. And like, and it's a shame because like, like I said, I've played every Assassin's Creed for a decade. And so like, you I wanted know- wanted to do well. Yeah, and I remember like back when, you know, AC2 was, and Brotherhood were like the, the pinnacle. And like, I remember seeing AC3 be like, this is a bit spotty. And the downward curve, Black Flag was great. And whatever, we, we've been up and down with this series so much. Yeah. And like Origins is just like, you play it and it's just, it just plays like hell. Like it just, it's, well, let's, yeah. let's jump into that then. Talk to us how <laughs> it how it plays. Because what is you, you, is it the same old thing of you know run, jump, stealth, stab? You said the combat felt a bit kind of like Dark Souls. Yeah. Do you mean do you mean Batman Arkham? No, no. Because no. I saw when I saw it, you were trying to chain together like. <coughs> I was trying to. Oh, yeah. um, no, so the way that they've done. I apologise for being ill again. Anyway, the uh, yeah, just them. the main <laughs> the main thing that they've done is uh, they've literally tried to do a Dark Souls. So um, combat is now on the shoulders. So you block with L one. You oh, do light attacks with R one, okay. heavy with R two. Um, and you do a special with R1 and R2 together. The only reason that um, it was more freeform was because I wasn't locked on to anybody, right. which is what you can do with Souls if you don't lock on. Yeah. But the second that you do lock on, the camera's behind you, and then you're, it's, it's meant to be like a one-on-one -on -one system. Obviously, okay. you, can, like, m you can manage multiple people the same way you do in Souls. You kind of want to swap your targets and that kind of thing. But the way that it feels is like it's so sped up and finicky and like um, I just, honestly, I had a moment, I uploaded this to Twitter, I think we can put this on the video. I had a, a beat with this where like, I just, I was trying to fight like three dudes 
and my guy was just like zipping Zipping everywhere. He was like trying to also lock onto certain people, but he was just not sure who the closest or most priority targets. He was just hitting nothing or just like moving into space. And it's like they've made this system, which they talked about. uh, Rami Ishmael talked about this beforehand, who's the game's producer, I think, or creative director, one of the two. He's he's an important man, Mm. and uh, he talks about how they've made this system, which is very like hitbox dependent. Like if you swing a blade, then that blade's arc is what the game counts as a hit. Whatever that touches, it hits. It's a really nice idea. And like hitbox uh, based games are what Bloodborne, Dark Souls, and Neo all have at their core. But it doesn't work when the system itself is so like lightning fast and you can't yeah. read enemy attacks and you're well, just getting... They complained a lot about Dark Souls' slower paced mm. uh, combat, but it's methodical. There's yeah. a reasoning behind it. Mm-hmm. Whereas I've experienced the same thing that you're talking about in games a bit like Neo. Neo was slightly too fast for me. Well, it, it certainly was in the Alpha and Beta. But, it, but it's things like that, like where it's like you need to be thinking about what you're doing and sometimes mm-hmm. it's... It's not Devil May Cry, no, so, no. But, uh, but they some to, they want to put that spectacle in there. Yeah, I, I so understand what you're talking about. That's one of the things that they've they've tried to do is like, well, we've overhauled the combat, and mm-hmm. so the fir- the very first thing you do in the game is a is a combat thing. It's one on one against this this guy, and it's just it just feels so so par. Like it's such a shame as well. I have to get it out. Like I have to say that like it, it's not like what. We, there are noticeable things that are worth picking apart in Assassin's yeah. Creed, but the size of the team and the art direction in it, the art direction is phenomenal. The world they've designed is gorgeous. Yeah, it looks, it like, looks beautiful. Like, in terms yeah. of, like, graphics that work, mm-hmm. it is a lovely-looking game. And, like, in terms of, like, I mean, Assassin's Creed Unity had some of the most gorgeous interiors. Like, they are, like Ubisoft's art department, I've always said this in articles and stuff, are second to none. Well, world like, building is their sort of thing. I mean, yeah, they, you, look at all of, as well. you look at all of their games they put out, games like Steep, Tom Clancy's Wildlands, and things like that, they know how to make locations mm-hmm. Varied and interesting, and in terms of like historical accuracy, like no one does virtual holiday trips like Ubisoft. Like, yeah, true. They d- really do pepper a world with so much cultural, like you know, meat, and that stuff's great. Do you find it still weird uh, sometimes with the whenever you die doing that whole desynchronization thing, especially when it's trying to immerse you so deeply into it? And then it was like, um, it was weird in AC Unity because that was the one where they didn't do any present day stuff. There is yeah. present day stuff in this, although embargoed, I can never tell you about it. Mm. You might have to see it for yourself. But um, it do, it's, it fits a little bit more in this, even right. though it takes a few hours ish before they they like give you the full package as to who okay. you're actually playing as. Well, all that let, kind of stuff. let's jump off of that as well and talk about who we're actually playing as. What's yes. the sort of characterizations and voice acting stories and things like well, that? What's going with that? That's the thing with that. Like you're playing as Bayek, who's the he's an old Medjay or a Medjay, which is like the old, ostensibly like the Egyptian version of like a sheriff okay. or like a like a bounty a guy who would basically just like help the the government or the pharaoh like look after the populace. Okay. So he's ostensibly it's their way of doing the witch in an Assassin's Creed game mm-hmm. so you're, you're jumping between different places doing missions for everybody else mm-hmm. but it's so rushed at the beginning like it jumps between two different time frames you go right. between when you're playing and a year before um, because basically you're on a big revenge mission for something that happens a year before of course you are um, which is it's a nice well it's a nice-ish way to give you at least some sort of immediate sense of drive mm-hmm. but the way that they do it it jumps between stuff using things like like stylistically using things like the animus transitions yeah. to jump between like here's a memory that he remembers okay now we're in this and then now we're going to jump to this fight and then we're going to go back to the present day and then we're going to go back to the thing like... what yeah that stuff feels terribly delivered and then like once the game actually starts it's like right here's five quests they all do this much XP you need to be this level to do this uh... and it's just like oh god like, See, I you need to set that up better. I always find whenever you get open worlds that are kind of like, you need to do all of these basic, terrible mini missions to yeah, unlock To the... afford the one you actually yeah. want to do, yeah. I mean, there was, have you ever played the game uh, No More Heroes? Yeah, but ages ago. Now, the whole premise of that, the director said, I want to ba- make people realise that they are grinding and being going through absolute chores yes. for, for violence like as the reward yeah, yeah. he was talking about how like how violence is gratification and stuff that's like a big that's so, Studio 51 yeah, yeah yeah it's like it's a is it Grasshopper Studios, I know, as people I think it's Suda, but I could be wrong. It's as old as it, Assassin's Creed. But, but that, worked, that worked for his game. But every other game I see that comes along and uh, basically apes that style of just like, do these five mini missions that we yeah. don't connect to the bigger story just because we can't think of a way to play <laughs> that game. Anymore. I always just go like, oh, oh come God. on, guys. I'll give them this. The uh, the thing with uh, all the side missions and stuff is they're, they're, as soon as they're extremely well written, they are written. Okay. They are more written. <laughs> they, are, they are written. They're, 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 like, they've tried to do nice little micro stories. Witcher style. Mm-hmm. They want you to like care about these little side missions that you're finding. And like, you know, this child's gone missing. Go find them and like talk okay. to the mother. And then do it, it's literally the Witcher thing. Put your vision mode on and then go and like talk, do these bits of investigative right. uh, items. And then go, okay, so they died over here and you go over there. Sounds fine. It's fine. I'm just just it's fine. Though. Assassin's Creed Origins, it's fine. Yeah, it's like, fine. Well, it's less than fine. But like some bits of it are fine. So we talked a bit about how the game plays. Mm. But you were about the bugs and glitches and obviously the stuff that I've seen as yeah. well. Does that ever actually render it unplayable pretty it's, much? Or? It's like, uh, yeah, I mean, like, it's it's weird because like they've, it's hard to tell, they've kind of got a weird blend of like hand animation and motion capture. I would right. assume that a lot more of it is hand animated um, and it just means that like, 
I just had a, a moment last night where I was like, I've had a target below me, mm. and I wanted to like jump down onto it. Yeah. And so like I tried to like move towards him, but he sort of like slipped a bit off the edge of the cliff. I fell down next to him, but the target, the prompt to hit him was still there. So I hit triangle. I was like over there, and Bayek just like went up and then went along. Oh, like, 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 like just like did, but did that, and then the music, the sound effect goes like, doom. like it's meant, to, it's meant to be all like you know weighty, cinematic, I did a thing. Yeah. weighty or whatever, and it's sort of like you like take off like, and you like, doom. and then you like. That sounds him. hilarious. It's hilarious, but it's just like how mm. how did you not prioritize the stealth kill animation? And even then, when you land on the guy, he does the same. He goes to do the hidden blade animation, but you don't start with the hidden blade. So he he like lands on the guy, and he's gonna do it, and then he stops and just. Like hits them instead because you haven't unlocked it yet. Oh, and it's right. like even well, that you can see why, the why stitching. Why would you, why would you do things. that then? You just have a new animation of him just yeah. going straight out. And it's just it's it is it's one of those things like it's not um because that's that's one facet of it is that like in general it feels very like just stitched together that's like strange. these different systems to it. But one of the things as well is like then that whole opening bit where you just get given like a handful of missions. Um, I find it really hard to like to even pass out information on on the map. Like you've got like you know the, it's obviously set in Egypt, so you've mm. got like a color palette that's very like gold and brown and yellow and like all that kind of stuff. It's all kind of coming together, um, and then you have icons and mission markers that are also yeah. yellow. And it's what? like, why? I so don't know. Make them red or something like that. Make them like, stand out, yeah. yeah. Stand, and so you're standing there going like, well, where does it want me to go? I'm like, well, I guess that I should look because it's got Skyrim's um, overhead bar, so you rotate and you watch oh, the yeah, icons come that. around. And it's like, well, that there's loads of question marks, literally Witcher style question marks on the map. Mm. So it's like, well, there are some question marks near me. One of them is slightly more yellow than the other one, so I think that's the main thing. I don't know. I hit right. the main, I hit the mission, there, sorry, I hit the map. And I, I, I scroll over, I'm like, okay, well, that looks like the mission I'm supposed to do. Some of them, it gives you a radial thing. Yeah. And it's like, well, get there and you can trigger the thing. Right. But there's no sense of, like, like other than going, well, I'm the Medjai and I'm this, like, Egyptian sheriff, so I should be doing these other yeah. things. But I also, he has, like, like I said, he has, he's on a revenge mission. Yeah. And, like, so I should be pursuing that. So it's like, maybe thematically they want you to feel the burden of being a sheriff and having your personal woes. I doubt it, but that's kind of what it, maybe what they're going for. Either way, the in-the-moment feeling of, like, this feels so unpolished and unplayable right now. Well, I mean, like you said, this has been, they've had an extra year yeah. off of this. I mean, it doesn't sound, it's the black it, doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't sound like it's worth a year. Because yeah. that's the thing, it's like, it's a shame to see a team like this big and with th with so many assets and so much money behind it put yeah. something out that is this, like, this reliably broken. Yeah. Like, just, you, you play it for 10 minutes and you'll see, like, something floating in midair. Or, like, I just saw, like, just a random NPC stuck in like the loop of animation, like walking to it back and forward, like jarring back and forth. It's like we know we know like, games aren't perfect. We know that there will yeah. be bugs and what glitches in most most titles out mm -hmm. there. But it's just it's just a real shame. It's just a real shame because yeah. it's like when you're coming back and it means this much to the series, you really want to put your first foot right. And it's just unfortunate. I mean, like if you were to give this a an immediate rating out of five, what does it feel oh, like God. to you at the moment? Is I it mean, quite low? Yeah, I'll have to preface that by saying that I've only played it for about three hours. But at the minute, I mean, just just base reactions is that it, it feels. <laughs> It, it feels very low. Okay. It feels like a two or a two and a half. And this is the thing, we're not just harshing on Ubisoft or any of their game titles because we've both really enjoyed playing their stuff in the past. Yeah, it's man. just a real shame because we expected so much more from this. However, that has been Scott's first impressions on this. I'm sure Ugh. that you can expect a full review of that later on if you feel up to going back. I'm definitely, yeah, I'm definitely going to play more of it. Like I said, I um, I would consider myself an Assassin's Creed fan. Yeah. I've played all of them. Like I, I used to absolutely adore the series back mm -hmm. when it was like circa AC One and then the Ezio trilogy. Mm -hmm. um, and there are some promising elements in here, like. But it's literal minuscule things, like yeah. the impact of shooting a guy feels fun, yeah. providing you've leveled up your bow so a headshot actually works. Stuff like that, it's just like, why? If I shoot a guy in the eye with an arrow, okay, man. it should it's kill okay. him. It's not okay, it's Jules. Okay. Well, it's, not, not. it's not okay, it's not okay, but oh. that's it. You've got very warm hands. Yeah, I do, mate. I've got clammy hands. Um, well, really that good. has been <laughs> the first impressions for Assassin's Creed Origins. Let us know what you thought about it. If you've already managed to pick it up or play it, then uh, let us know about that. Like, share, and subscribe as usual. And as always, I've been Jules. I've been Scott. And we'll speak to you soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs> oh, 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 wasn't that something? Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe below. And also, the people who made this lovely video, they're appearing right here. But if you're thinking to yourself, I want to see more content, Jules, then why not look above my head? As there probably is some. I don't know. I can't see it. Until next time.